become the fighting Irish of Northern Indiana way, the early autumn air is filled with wild predictions and creeds originating with head coach Elmer Layden. And not without cause. We, for out of 63 players, we saw only 12 have returned. But Layden has been no hat. So how many games will you win this year, coach? That's nothing to uh, brag about. Three team making its season's debut. 35,000 spectators gather at South Bend, Indiana for the fireworks that happen early and continue without a let-up. The victims being the Jay Hawkers of Kansas. Expected to provide stiff opposition, but these Notre Dame ball packers are turning the contest into a stampede. There goes Sheridan, Notre Dame halfback, riding around his own right end, snaking his way through the entire Kansas defense, romping into the clear and old line. One of eight touchdowns piled up by these fighting at home are playing their first varsity game. Simonich, Notre Dame fullback, carries on in the second quarter, a gain of about 10 yards. Two plays later, the same lad cracks the left side of the line, contributing to a Notre Dame runaway of 52 to nothing. To Atlanta, Georgia, though the fighting Irish of Notre Dame, where Georgia Tech's worries begin with an intercepted pass in the opening quarter. Zantini turning the tide for a net gain of 13 yards and a Notre Dame first down on the Yellow Jackets 42 yard strike. And once on Tech terrain, there's no stopping them. Tonelli carries on for the Irish and seems to be doing all right for himself, totaling about 25 yards. So here he goes again, boys, around the flank and over the goal line. It's Notre Dame today by a final score of 14 to 6. And here at South Carolina, animated symbol of Notre Dame, flashing true mid-season form today at the expense of Illinois. There's Stevenson, fighting Irish wing and run of 13 yard. Another gallop around the flank of the line penetrates further into Illini territory. These Irish are really on the wing today. Undefeated eyes, they point to national recognition. Notre Dame's ball again to Stevenson, who fades. Let's go a looping pass to Brown, standing on the goal line. And that, my fellow quarterbacks, is how it keeps at the end of the first quarter, seven to nothing. Tonelli, Notre Dame fullback, provides a third quarter thrill when he snakes his way through the Illinois secondary. Then, Ladderton, who mops up everything in his path, including the water bucket. Defensively, it seems, these Irish attempt to play of the day finds Illinois on 30-yard line. And, folks, we give you a lad who's 70. Just another reason why football fans go... South Bend, 5,000 for the Bend 11 from Carnegie Tech. And by our first half, the crowd thrillingly fought evenly matched contest. Tech's aerial bombardment launched to naught. And he, the Notre Dame half ends with the team's gripped and scoreless deadlock. Coming out for the blows again, take to the air. A pass, Carnelli to Condit is good, and the Tech advance seems to be going for a combination. A lateral, Carnelli six yards. But the whims of football, Kibo attack carries over into the final quarter of the moment. Off 20 yards on the next left, go the clear, picks up 50 yards. Fumbles, but Kerr recovers. The Kerr provides the climax in an end around Irish still abide in the ranks of the undefeated. Football's annual Specky Notre Dame game brings out the Cadet Corps in impressive array. Team to observe the anniversary of these two arch route of fire 1931. An army pass Wilson's offensive with the ball game scarcely underway. Fronchak on a spinner crashes through the Notre Dame forward wall to an off passing ace running to the left. Let's go a pass to Army's right end to Notre Dame five. Then, through the analytical land motion camera, movie tone shows you the well-timed touchdown pass. Long spotting Sullivan at the Irish goal line flips the ball, which Sullivan fondles for a while, then gathers it to himself, much to the real, who more or less dominates the scene until the third, when Notre Dame's fullback, Joe, breaks through a tackle, racing 33 yards, and Notre Dame has crossed the midfield strike, and now operates on army ground. Notre Dame to Sago, who three yards to Brown, who small and sick, foot sore and weary, strives to stem the relentless Irish advance. Here again, through the slowly executed thrust off Army's tackle, Notre Dame's ball, going wide, outstepping Army's tired secondaries. He seems well on his way. But charging into the play comes Long, Army back, who makes a desperate lunge to bring him down, but the fleet-footed Irish end eludes him. In so doing, however, he encounters Army's safety, manages to force him out of bounds a foot from the goal line. At the goal line, it's back to the wall. Army stand is futile in the face of the pounding Notre Dame backs as Sheridan dives over for the score. Once again in the fateful final period, we find Notre Dame's ball packers on a rampage. Thiesing again, taking the ball, and Army's 47 dashes through the entire Army team to the final score, which reads Notre Dame 19, Army 7. Baltimore Stadium come the Navy's midshipmen, where Notre Dame provides the opposition in a football tilt that draws and fans. And when Navy's opening period aerial barrage begins to click, well, it looks like another upset might be added to the fence. Navy flips a pass to Whitehead, which puts the ball on the Irish foot, but that's as far as it gets, and Notre Dame's crisis has been successfully passed as Sago in the second quarter totes the Irish ball on a mad gallop down the side stripes, stick three. 
Zantini, adding to the Irish cause, travels wide around the end of the line to the Navy 15. And then a goal who takes on a fake punches into the end zone as Notre Dame remains undefeated by a final score of 15 to nothing. Undefeated and pointing to the national crown, Tango Gophers, and the old time and getting underway. Having the Notre Dame ball is then carried by Zantini. Going off left tackle, the Irish right halfback bounds into the clear, and once beyond the Minnesota secondary, the fleet-footed ball packer swerves toward the side stripe and spells a note at six minutes old. In the second quarter, Minnesota's quarterback, George Faust, gets off a punt. It's taken by Sitko, who returns to the Irish are again on Minnesota land. Then Sago, fading 10 yards, lets go a long forward pass to 13 to nothing. Fighting Savage, Minnesota passes. Accepted by Notre Dame, Sitko leaping for the ball. And in the end zone, and Notre Dame wins 19 to nothing. To Evanston, a game where Northwestern's Wildcats essay the tough assignment of toppling the South Benders from the number one spot among the nation's mighty. Wildcat left half smashes off tackle for 17 yards. What now? Soper again, a pass intended for Deal, but Notre Dame. Willard Hofer, a second string quarterback, who now makes football headlines and picking up a few Irish blockers. 65 your Notre Dame score. Fighting back furiously in the same second period, Hollenstein packs Northwestern's Vaughn McGurn. Wildcat fullback strung with Sitko, Irish quarterback, bringing him down. McGurn, piled, but the edge tall of Nick Contias comes through as the point after touchdown is good and Northwestern leads the half. But now James, Bond right end, steps off fifth before being forced out of bounds. Then into the picture again steps Hofer, Dick Merriwell's boy, and there's the Dame's spotless record by a count of nine to seven. Bill Douglas reporting the by a movie tone. The largest crowd to gather in Memorial Coliseum this year is on hand to cheer the Gridiron Warriors in their 13th intersectional clash. It's the football classic of the season. So on with the game's ball with Sago back waiting for that pass. He takes it. Is he going to run or throw it? Here goes the heave, and it's completed. A beauty. Moving. Zantini is back, but it goes to Thiesing, and then in a reverse goes to Sago, and he skirts the sack for the Trojans. It's first and ten. He takes it. It's a quick kick, intending to catch Notre Dame napping. But Hofer is back there with it. He's his own 25, and he's got it. They are... A good the ball goes to Banta. He spins and hits that line for five fast yards. Look at him fight. Back for the Trojans. Following Banta, he's a first down. The Trojans ball with Day back waiting for it. He's going to hit it. He is back for the Irish in Notre Dame. He has it. On a reverse, he gives it to Sago. He's sweeping wide, and it's good for a first down. Look at him go. Sends back for the Trojans, and, he's, and it's good. The ball makes a first down. Anderson is back for the Trojans, and it's goal to go. Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. Gibson of Tech tosses a pass right into the arms of Zantini of Notre Dame. And the right half paves the way for an Irish score. Notre Dame's star today is Tonelli, who goes off tackle for the capacity crowd see around right end to score. Notre Dame 14, Georgia Tech 6. Here's a slow speed picture of Carnegie Tech's suited fourth down play against Notre Dame. The Tech signal caller had been told it was only the third down, but despite argument and misunderstanding, the Irish get the ball at game. Hussmore takes the ball. Sheridan gets the ball next and slices his way down the field. But he's hit and fumbles. The Irish recover, however, on Tech's seven-yard line. Goes wide around end and down the sideline for the only touchdown of the game. Seventy-nine thousand have turned out at the Yankee Stadium for the 25th Army Notre Dame game. Notre Dame kicks a long kick down. That goes too long. Down left in. Through to Notre Dame's 15-yard line. Then Army's payoff play has long been for the first touchdown. It's not until the third quarter that the Irish get started with Sagal heaving a long pass to Brown that spells touchdown. Notre Dame gets in scoring position again at Sunards. In the final quarter, Notre Dame's powerhouse gets down to...
Then Sheridan puts the Irish in front with a touchdown smash. It isn't the final thrill for the crowd. Just to make the route complete, Thiesing breaks through and gets away for 48 yards. The Middies play host to Notre Dame before 66,000 people. But an impolite guest named Zontini slashes the Navy line for 25 yards. A dismal day for the crowd and for the Middies as Sago behind perfect blocking score. Zontini again hits the line to bring the ball to striking distance and the Irish are due for their second score when the ball goes to Thiesing for a touchdown. Within six minutes of the opening whistle, the crowd of 56,000 here at Notre Dame's home stadium sees Zontini go through tackle for 84 yards and the first Irish touchdown. In the second quarter, the Irish score again as a beautiful pass by Sagal sails into the arms of Brown who romps across. Minnesota flashes brilliant football with this play as laterals from Christensen to Hubler to Faust chalk up 40 yards for the Gophers. But Faye Van Every is intercepted by Sitko. Zago's inspired passing clicks again as Joe to Santini picks up 25 yards. Sago starts around his end, but it's another pass, another touchdown, and another game. Notre Dame, a small margin as it meets Northwestern. In the second period, Soper of Northwestern hurls a pass intended for grief, but Hofer intercepts for the Irish and heads for the payoff stripe with perfect blocking in front. Northwestern begins a touchdown drive with a pass from Hannenstein to... The Wildcats' air attack clicks again with a toss from Jefferson to Hannenstein. McGurn gets the ball and first down on the two-yard line. ...for North Gore, and things look black for the Irish record. But about Notre Dame, Thiesing goes off tackle for a nice gain. Then it's Santini around end as the Irish slash and fight their way down the field. Sagaw this time as he fades, fakes a pass and goes round end. Trailing seven to six, the Irish are desperate. After three line plunges fail, Hofer, who scored earlier, is back in the game and his field goal puts Notre Dame in front, nine to seven, a close call. One hundred thousand classic battle between them and the Irish. And here are the highlights of the game. Anderson's pass to Jones starts the Trojans on their way to victory. Banta now hits the line on a spinner and fights. And here's the play that turned the tide. Day fades back and heaves a sensational pass to Kruger, who catches it almost in the end zone and goes over for the first. <laughs> Unable to crack the walls of Troy, the Irish take to the air, but sag on the goal line and another Irish chance goes up in smoke. Puts the ball deep in Irish territory. A few plays later, Anderson goes over from the three-yard line and makes it a Trojan holiday. 